What's your experience been thus far at World Cups, and how do you think that like professionalism in swimming can mm. grow? That's a good question. We can get really deep into that. Um, I think the biggest thing that I learned during ISL was um, kind of taking my experience from a college team and then applying it into a more professional world in terms of the team aspect and really learning about yourself but in a, in a team environment and what that means to like perform for something bigger than yourself and I know it's so cliche and people say it all the time but like you really got that sense and I was just telling my coach today there's something about looking behind you as you're walking out for ISL and seeing the people that are getting ready to swim next and you're like I'm gonna swim so well right now so that you have the opportunity to just swim so free yeah. and I think there's really something to that development just within like the self yeah. that gets you out of the self and makes the sport something more than just like swimming there and back just because it's what you trade for you know right, yeah um so i think i mean last year was my first time doing the world cup circuit too um and it was cool to be able to kind of carry that mindset into the fina meets a little bit more but i definitely think that that team environment is kind of going to be the next level um into getting a little bit deeper into that um, but then in terms of just kind of developing like you said i've kind of like been on my own and kind of like pieced together my own schedule and I'm kind of doing that again this year. I'm not really looking to compete at all the tier pro series necessarily, but kind of looking at international meets and stuff abroad. Um, Cause I think there are just like, there is so much more to the sport. And I think I really didn't recognize that until I got to ISL. That was my first real experience with international swimming. And I remember the first year walking around and someone was like pointing someone out and I was like, oh, who is that person? And they're like, that's the world record holder in this event, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh my God, I have no idea. But I just think we were like such a bubble within the US. I mean, it is so big and we have such great competition here. Yeah. Um, but just like, that was my real first experience, like seeing yeah. what other people are doing and just like different trainings and different, um, just mentalities and different aspects of the yeah. sport. So that was really cool. Do you feel like you have that camaraderie and sort of teamsmanship with the athletes who are here? Because from the outside looking in and just interacting with a lot of the athletes, it seems like there there is a friend group, especially as everybody yeah. travels together and you go to these international meets, but the that doesn't provide that sort of team connection in terms of uh, you know competing for your team in the way that it was for ISL. But um, do you have that sense of camaraderie with people that are kind of part of this circuit or the swimming community at large? Yeah, but I think that came from ISL. So a lot of the friends and people that I'm hanging out mm -hmm. with here are because of because of my ISL team and because of my ISL experience. And like I said, last year after Naples, um, a bunch of the Aussies were doing the World Cup stops and I didn't have a lease at the time. So I was kind of like, that sounds like fun, let's do it. Um, so I jumped in for the Berlin and Budapest and we weren't swimming as a team necessarily, but there was so many people from different ISL teams that were all coming together to do the same thing. And it was like, you know, this is just, that shared experience, we're in our 20s, we're traveling the world, we're training for a week and then competing, moving on to the next country. And so just having that shared experience kind of, you're not on a team necessarily, but you're just, you're sharing that. And so yeah. I think that builds camaraderie that way. Right. Um, but definitely like a lot of the connections that I have here are because of my, the experience with the ISL for sure. Yeah, so you yeah. said the next thing for you uh, after the World Cup series is a long course meet, but not the one that some people would have thought of in the US, but going to Australia to compete. Yeah. So yeah. what's the background on like, just planning out your schedule for the year. Are you trying to be more open to those experiences, as you've said, and kind of, uh, and do you have a plan for that already? Yeah, definitely. So I'm actually going down to visit and trade with um, one of the people that I met uh, through ISL. So it's kind of like continuing that international camaraderie, which is pretty cool. Um, so I'll be down in Gold Coast training for a couple weeks and then compete there. And then, yeah, looking forward, we're looking at doing the Marinostrum stop and seeing how we can incorporate different kind of more local meets around that and doing clinics as we go. Um, a big part of what we're trying to do with the Aloha group is to bring kind of a service aspect into the sport, again, making it bigger than yourself. Um, so doing clinics for like local teams as we travel um, and just trying to like bring professional swimming into the awareness of some of these like younger teams who may not otherwise have the opportunity to like fund or to pay for some of these top name swimmers right. to come in. But if we can do that and get them excited and get them, you know, maybe they come to the meet or maybe they just like tune in and watch and now they have that personal connection to a pro swimmer, they're gonna be more interested in the sport as we go. Right, I love so, that. Is, yeah. Are there some certain communities that you targeted and are there, do you have a schedule set for the year for Aloha to visit certain clubs and clinics? And yeah, stuff? so we're kind of in the process um, right now of talking with a, a training base in Croatia. Um, so they're kind of setting something up there. So we're thinking of doing something in Croatia, moving through the Mare Nostrum tour. There's a, a meet in Iceland right after, so it can be our like summer segment. Um, yeah, and then otherwise just doing like local things on the island. Um, and we have a couple teams 
passing through as they come in for um, like a training camp for Worlds. Um, so as much as we can, like host people like that and just like get them to experience the island and, and bring them into the swim community there and have that kind of like interchange would be really cool. Yeah. Uh, do you see that as like a potential business opportunity, whether you know it's a nonprofit or whatever, like going long term for you? Do you even think long term in terms of you know what life after swimming looks like for you? Yeah. Um, definitely something within teaching, whether it's in the pool um, or something a little bit different. But I think, yeah, just that service aspect. And me with swimming, I've spent so much of my life now, like almost 20 years in the sport, that I feel like I definitely have that credibility and kind of that level of like understanding and mastery in the water and kind of the mindset and just like the whole mentality and how the sport works um, to be able to give voice to that um, and inspire this next generation. Um, I think the biggest thing, like I was saying, is really using the sport as a kind of mechanism for personal growth and understanding like yourself as a person, whether that means reaching your potential, I mean, hopefully reaching your potential in the pool, but just like bringing that into other aspects of your life, whatever lessons that you learn in the pool, just kind of have that carry over. Right. Um, so being a voice for that within the young kids and just getting them excited to like really explore that in themselves. What do you feel like you've learned in that way about yourself, mm -hmm. uh, especially in this sort of second chapter of your swimming career, having stepped yeah. away from the sport? I was honestly, I would say the service aspect again, really. I think there was a long time where it did, it felt selfish in a way, but I think reframing what it means to kind of be selfish and understand that when you are swimming, having it be for more than just like your own personal glory, I guess, and kind of understanding more of what that, what the ego is and kind of what's, what your purpose is and what's really driving you to go. Yeah. Um, I think that's been something that I've been kind of just like chipping away at and kind of slowly understanding more and more of like yeah. what's, what is the real purpose, you know, like what are we doing this for? And that's yeah. really interesting. What uh, have you learned on the more technical side within swimming? Uh, and are, are you a different athlete now than you were kind of pre retirement? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I definitely think I'm more of a rhythm swimmer. Um, and that's something that we found out uh, leading into Olympic Games actually. It was about six months before trials, and we just like totally replanned our race plan for the 100 freaks. So we just figured out the more relaxed and in control I was, the more rhythm, more flow, and it was easier to get into that flow state, just like feeling like I was in a more controlled and relaxed space. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that I really kind of tried to carry into my own practice day to day is how to get into that flow space. Mm -hmm. Whether I mean, we talked before about doing the yoga stuff, right. but just finding things like that. And I know a lot of people do it through music or through art or kind of like these creative medians and how can I channel that kind of like, freedom of expression and kind of just like getting into that state where you're not really thinking, you're just letting the things come to you um, outside the pool and then how to be able to channel that for, for swimming and, and just kind of letting the things come. And we've done technical stuff for so many years now that your body knows how to move through the water. So it's how to turn the brain off and just like get to point B, point A, point B. So do you get nervous? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, because when I when I hear sort of a relaxed flow state, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's sort of a combination that you're describing between, um, you know, being being prepared and calm and confident, but yeah. also still being ready to race. You yeah. know, it's not that you're you know in shavasana on the mat. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right before. Um, <laughs> right. No, I mean, there's definitely still nerves, but I remember um, my club coach telling me, you know, he's like, if you're nervous, that's good because that means you care. And if you're not nervous, I think you're like you're a little too calm. So I think like using those nerves as like you're seeing this as like an opportunity and this is like a chance to showcase for yourself more so than anything else just yeah. like everything that you've been working on like this is the moment you know you've had the preparation you're ready and then this is the time to, to let that go and let it happen yeah how much uh, will you surf coming into what is this the surf season in hawaii as you come into the winter uh, yeah but that's like big surf season <laughs> that's like a little little above my pay grade right now um, but we were surfing a lot in san diego i haven't gotten out there as much just we have a little been yeah. a little bit more focused in the pool um, but i definitely i mean i am all for it i know david marsh was super into it too just the yeah. the connection with the water in a different way i think is really big um and just like learning right. how to move in a different way but i mean in more and more like as a uh, practical sense training wise like actually like the pole and like paddling out there um, I was wearing a whoop for a while sometimes and I would send it to David and he was like like my surf sessions were reading higher than practice sometimes because it is I mean you're sprinting you're like when the waves are good you're in and out you're in and out right. but um, yeah it's just like a fun different way to interact with the water but yeah I will not be surfing North Shore Hawaii anytime soon that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> awesome thanks so much for spending yeah. the time yeah, oh, right there. appreciate it thanks.